Hey, what's up everybody? This is Browncoat67 coming at you from part two of our series on how to build a castle. Last episode, we finished up building our working drawbridge gatehouse. If you haven't seen it yet, I'm going to put that up here on the top now. You can click that card. In this episode, we're going to start working on our outer walls that surround the lower bailey or the lower city. I am going to confess that since last episode, I did smooth out the terrain in front and added a pathway. I'm sorry, I, I didn't even realize I was doing it, and then I was like, oh, I'm off camera, I shouldn't be doing that. So I stepped. Alright, moving on to the fun stuff. So just like with the uh, gatehouse here, I'm going to be using deep slate bricks. Probably some stairs, I also got the blackstone bricks and blackstone stairs. I also have the deep slate brick wall. I've got chain, and I've got lanterns. All right, so for the wall, I'm gonna go to the third block in so that there's two blocks there in front. And I'm probably gonna take it, let's see, one, two, probably all the way back to here. That way there will be um, enough of a walkway on top for people to run around on top of the wall without tripping over themselves. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this probably ground level and I'm gonna make it four blocks taller than this so one two three so probably that right there is how tall I'm going to make it All right. so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build this wall outward a little bit and then probably right when I get to the other side of this hole I'm actually gonna curve that wall around and we're gonna run it straight to that mountain over there all right now that i'm looking at that i'm definitely going to bring that up taller i've got more room i don't know what i was thinking that's a little short and then uh then i'll start wrapping that around all right there we go that looks a lot better height wise so now we're going to turn it so which means I'm going to take this one out too and then I'll probably Bring that out three, then I'll bring it out two. I'll bring it out one. And we're gonna go two this way. And then we're gonna go three this way. And then I think that's going to be the new outside wall. So now that I've got the wall taken out from the gatehouse and I have it turned, I can actually use some fill commands if I want to, to make the rest of the walls really quickly. So I'm going to grab some coordinates here. So I'm grabbing the top block here, which is going to be 74, 97, and I'm going to go negative 155. Now I'm going to take that. And I'm going to go straight this way. I'm going to do my best to stay on the 155, my Z axis here. All right, and I'm going to go up just a little bit here. So I'm going to run this all the way to 166. Now I'm not going to get the Y coordinate from this. All right, I was just running this wall as far as I could. For the Y coordinate, I'm actually going to come and look at the lowest point, which is down here. So my lowest Y value needs to be 88. I'm going to back up here a little bit so you can see it. And I'm going to go fill. And I'm going to use the coordinates that I just got, 74, 
97, negative 155, and I'm gonna take that to 166, which is way over there by the waterfall. 88, which is all the way down on the lowest level of the ground. And then I'm gonna keep it on negative 155. Now for this, I'm using the deep slate underscore bricks. And I'm going to replace everything there. And just like that, it built me that wall all the way across. And I should have been one higher. That should have went to 98. <laughs> I'm gonna have to fix that. There. And now I could do basically the same thing, only this time I'm going to use the coordinates 74, 98, negative 151, all the way down to 166, 88, negative 151. So all I did is I changed my Z coordinates there because I already have all the other coordinates from doing it on this side. So now I can just redo what I'm doing. So I'm changing the Z for me, which is the one that I adjusted, just like that. And there we go. I have almost that entire wall done in just a couple seconds and I barely had to do anything. Now I have enough coordinates where if I want to, I could fill this entire wall in as a hollow cube. So if I were to do that, I would just change this 151 over here to a 155. And instead of having replace, I'm gonna type in hollow. And now it filled in the entire wall as a hollow cube. And if I come over here to where the lowest point is, lowest ground level, you can drop in and see that it paved everything perfectly. It emptied out all the grounds. Makes it really quick and easy if you want to do really, really big builds. Now you'll just have to go over it and add the extra little things that make it stand out because just having these long, flat surfaces can actually be very boring to the eyes, very repetitive. So you got to want to make sure that you add something onto it. And now just like on the roof, I'm going through and adding the uh, the crenels here to the battlements. And uh, when it comes over to the curve section, what I tend to do is I tend to put them on the corners but I'm gonna have them facing the direction of the main orientation. So at first they're gonna continue pointing the same direction until we come to a clear shift in which way the wall is changed to, or oriented to, and then uh, I will change the direction of them. All right, now that I'm way over here where we're starting to get up into the mountain, I'm actually going to start bringing this up with the landscape so that we don't lose the tactical advantages that would be brought by having a wall. All right, that actually looks like it's probably high enough. It doesn't need to go all the way up the hill. So I've got the crenels all the way down. I've got the wall risen up to the landscape to match the side of the mountain. We might eventually add another little guard house over here. I do tend to like to add guard houses at the ends where we match up with uh, mountains and things like that. But I want to come over to the other side here because we're going to try to do something very similar. And obviously, we have a little bit of a different landscape here. I'll probably come out further straight. And I'll probably try to curve up as I'm going up the hill, maybe through and over this cave area so that I can match up into the side of this mountain over here. Not sure yet though, I think that's gonna be probably where I'm aiming for. All right, so as we're, we're gonna start with our wall here and uh, 
just like on the other side, I'm going to go ahead and just grab some coordinates so I can go ahead and make this real quick. So for me right here, I'm looking at 64, 99, and negative 106. Now this time, my x axis is going to be the one that stays the same. So I'm going to try and go this way while staying on 64. And I'm going to run it all the way to... probably about here and then we can start coming up that hill uh, so with this one right here I'm at 64 and that is negative 78 now again I'm not gonna grab this Y coordinate I want to take a look and see what my lowest position is that I have which looks like it's gonna be right down in here and that's gonna be 93 so much taller than the last time. And then this side over here is going to be on the x-axis of 68. So I'm going to go ahead and just change one of those 64s over to a 68 because I'm going to just make this a hollow uh, tube or cube even though it's not square. So I'm going to go fill 64, 98, negative 106, and I'm going to take that to 68, 93, negative 78, and this is going to be with deep slate underscore bricks, and it's going to be hollow. Put that in, and boom, and oh. no, nope. we're a little too tall here. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and start adding those uh, crennels. All right, we're going to rise up with the landscape like we did before. So now we're going to start our turn. So I'm going to come over here and we're going to come out with three. But we're also going to come up with the landscape there. Alright, so now I have this side turned and I'm going to end it up right into that hill there. So from the outside, the main entrance way into this valley, you have a very nice looking lower wall uh, for this what's going to be a castle city. Now this section down here on the bottom is going to be what's called a lower bailey. This is going to consist of a lot of like the markets for the town, supply shops, things that the everyday people are going to be interacting with and then coming up here uh, maybe in the next video we're going to section off what's going to be the upper bailey or the central bailey which is the upper city which is going to be like where your main hall your great hall is going to be sorry your donjon which is your like main fortress building uh, like the capital type building you're also going to see maybe a temple 
Um, I'm planning on turning this waterfall into like the city well, uh, maybe introducing some aqueduct systems with that. So we're definitely going to have some fun stuff with that. So I think now I'm going to go ahead and just put some uh, additional details on the outside of my wall, uh, a couple decorations, and uh, then I'll show you what I got. So as you can see, I went around the exterior of the wall and I attached lanterns hanging on chains. And these are actually brick walls, the brick fences that you get. Uh, I always like the way that looks, having chain hang from those with some lanterns on it. Gives it a much more uh, industrialized uh, medieval look rather than just some torches on a wall, you know what I mean? Much more Iron Age. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Don't forget to click on the next video so that we can keep working on our castles together. If that video is not popping up, then of course it hasn't come out yet. So please hit subscribe so that you won't miss it when it does. All right, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.